Uh, in recent years, we have started the tradition of marking international days that are relevant to Mashav activities, and today we are marking the World Bee Day. Mashav regards beekeeping as a tool for development. Mashav shares Israel's experience in the field to raise awareness to bee population conserv conservation and its importance for the entire ecosystem. Beekeeping contributes to the improvement of livelihood, nutrition and food security in the developing world, empowering thousands of smallholder uh, farmers. And beekeeping helps bringing individual families out of poverty and boosts local and national economies. So I hope we'll enjoy this day and thank you to Mashav's Agricultural Center for organizing this day and I wish us uh, to enjoy this day together. Thank you very much, Julie. Um, and now, uh, without further ado, I'd like to uh, begin our uh, intervention by inviting uh, Michael Roisman from Be Hero to share with us. Um, wait, let me unmute you. Okay, uh, about Be Hero. Um, Michal, try to unmute yourself because I'm 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 finding. No, Michal, we don't hear you. Ah, good. Okay, Michal, the floor is okay. yours. Yes. Okay. Great. So let me uh, just share screen so we can start. Perfect, you can see the presentation, Be Hero, Point and Prosper. Perfect, okay. So, hi everyone, my name is Michal Oizman and I'm a co-founder of uh, Be Hero. One moment, okay. Sorry, it's Jam. Okay, so what we do in Be Hero is we increase crop yields by optimizing the process of pollination. We do that by using big data forecasting models uh, in order to optimize the pollination process. Um, so before I will understand how we actually do that, let me introduce you to the team. So Itai, as you can see in the middle, uh, my co-founder is a second generation commercial beekeeper. He managed and operated one of the largest bee farms in Israel. Um, Omel, our CEO, is a um, serial entrepreneur, what you call. I founded and sold two companies as uh, technological experts. Um, Yuval Regev is our uh, CTO. Um, he's been in the years in the Army in the technological units, uh, afterwards in, in startup companies, uh, in leading startup companies of uh, technology. Um, Dave Mendez uh, was one of the largest beekeepers in the United States, and we're happy to say that now is uh, one of our advisors. Uh, he used to be um, um, one of the bird members of the, um, of the most known beekeeping organization in the United States. And myself, I'm responsible for uh, strategy. I have experience in uh, human robotic and human computer interaction and leading teams. So this is our team. And now let's, uh, let's talk about what we're here for. So we see in recent years how technology is trying to um, change and enter the agricultural world. Um, you can see different examples here on the screen. So nutrition, and nutrition uh, supply chain, water prediction, disease control. But one of the most important parts for the crop output, which is pollination, was left behind. And bees that are responsible uh, for pollinating most of what we eat are dying. So we need to find a way to not only save the bees, but to optimize the process of pollination. And this is what we do in Bee Hero. So we manage to translate um, this natural process of pollination into some kind of a mathematical model uh, that enables us to optimize this process. And this is how we do that. You can see here our sensor in a real uh, uh, comb uh, from a hive that we monitor. And uh, this monitor uh, collects different types of parameters from inside the hive, and it actually becomes part of the bee, beehive. We are able to tell the beekeeper what's going on uh, in the beehive before any damage occurs, so that the beekeeper can maintain its hive strong and healthy uh, during the whole year. Um, you can see here an example of our, uh, of our uh, dashboard. Um, 
And the idea is that when these hives come to the pollination season, they, they arrive uh, very healthy and very strong, and the hives that are very strong and healthy can pollinate better the crop. Um, now, the farmer, from the other hand, gets his dashboard for the first time. He's able to uh, get the transparency of the pollination process and a full picture of what's going on instead of, uh, you know, just white boxes that are spread uh, in, in his field and really able to have some control of, uh, of his um, field. Now I want to jump to one of our case studies. This is an experiment we did in Israel um, a few, few years ago, uh, two years ago actually. Uh, it's in the sunflower uh, field. So we took two fields in one, uh, there were um, regular beehives, strong beehives that the grower was um, uh, used to use during the pollination season. And on the other field, we used bee hero hives. So when I, when I say bee hero hives, I mean hives that were monitored and treated according to the insights our system provides. Uh, and therefore, we call them bee hero hives. They were super strong. And we can see that in the end of the experiment, the grower not only find out that he increased his crop yield by 22%, but he also used uh, less hives. And now I want us to connect again to, to uh, the fact that we need to uh, optimize also the processes of the way we grow food. Uh, and this is one example of how we can utilize our resources better. Uh, so this is one uh, case study. And now we're going to jump to another one. So soybean uh, was actually uh, genetically modified to not be dependent on bees, but uh, recent research, uh, research uh, from, uh, from recent years uh, suggests that um, putting strong hives during the pollination season of soy can actually also contribute to, the, to increase uh, the crop yield. And this is uh, an experiment we did last year in Alabama. Um, and you can see amazing results of one of the most important crops for humanity. Uh, of course, we need to do more um, uh, research in this in order to actually understand if uh, bees can contribute to growing soy. Uh, but if it can, it's, it's amazing uh, news for, uh, for all of us. Now, it's not only sunflowers and soybeans. It's all, it's, it's all the different uh, crops you can see here on the list and many more. Um, what you can see here is only examples for research that have been done in each one of those crops to, uh, ex to, to give you an example of how uh, when you manage the bees and you um, treat them all year long during those um, um, insights that you get, you can actually uh, increase the crop yield. So you can see here different numbers. Uh, of course, it depends on the crop itself, but, um, but it's something um, that is possible and, of course, worth doing. I want to talk a bit about the way we see our competition. So we divide our competition into two verticals, efficiency and scalability. I will start with the scalability. So as I said, the bees are dying. This is something that we are all aware of. Uh, it comes from um, uh, um, changes that are happening in the modern world, all related to uh, what we call the colony collapse disorder. So monoculture, urbanization, and so forth. Um, and we see in recent years how technology is trying to replace bees. So we see artificial pollination uh, solutions. Uh, even Walmart uh, or, uh, wrote a patent about um, artificial pollination, and we can see more uh, solution and that aspect. At Bee Hero, uh, we perceive the honeybee as a solution that is the most efficient because this solution has been perfected over millions of years of evolution. And if we will see solution, um, robotic solution that uh, will replace bees, it will happen um, in a few years from now. Um, so this is regarding the scalability. And of course, if we look at the unit economics of uh, being able to actually pollinate a field with the efficiency of a bee, uh, it becomes very, very expensive. The bee knows exactly how and when uh, to pollinate each flower. And in order for a robot to do that, I need to go over the field again and again. So this is uh, with the artificial pollination. And if we look at the efficiency, uh, you can see at that side more uh, competitors that are trying to do something with actual bees as we do. So there are companies that are trying to find biological solutions 
uh, like putting uh, some kind of a material, biological material on the flowers in order to um, make the flowers pollinate better. We don't know what the outcomes of, of this um, solution will be. And of course, other companies are trying to monitor the beehives uh, and give uh, the beekeeper some understanding of the operation. Uh, it's important for us to say that from a very early stage, Bee Hero um, marks the commercial beekeepers as our customers and the products from its actual uh, hardware to the way we give insights are very suitable for the commercial beekeeper. So this is also something to take into consideration in the competitive uh, landscape. Um, this is the end of the presentation. I would say that um, in order to optimize the way we grow food for uh, the growing population that we're going to um, meet in a few years, we need to understand how we optimize each part of the process as we talked earlier, and pollination, uh, in our view, is the key. Um, we have some time for questions if you, if you have. Great. Thank you very much, Michal. Um, uh, please, if you have any questions, please send them uh, through the chat because uh, we are very, we are numerous uh, um, participants and it would be too difficult to open the microphones. So if you no have problem. a question, please. No, no questions? Um, here, Michal, there is a, a question. Uh, um, how how uh, soon do you think, or what do you think for uh, developing countries um, your technology can uh, contribute right now? Like in the future, it's, it's clear, but right now, is there something that uh, you would gear specifically towards developing countries? So our solution is, um, um it's something that we want to be suitable for every part of the world. Um, we are now still in the phase of our, uh, what we call the, the first product that we can uh, go to the market with, but our um, next product will be something that will be more stable in order to put in uh, rural areas and, and it will be possible to also uh, enter to, to other markets. So. Um, the sensors are the sensors, the sensors themselves are, are very simple. The brain of the company is in the uh, is actually in the software. So um, because we created it that way, it's really simple to put the sensors anywhere and and get the indication that are uh, relevant from the software. So we don't see a, a, a real problem uh, with any of the markets. We just need to find solution for. Um, our network and and that's it basically great thank you um, okay so uh, there will be a, a, a also the occasion to ask questions in the end and right now I would like to uh, um, invite our next uh, um, lecturer our next presenter uh, Yossi Oud Yossi the floor is yours thank you good afternoon here in Israel um, I'm uh, going to talk uh, by through hats that I have. One is, uh, it's Magen Dvorim Adom. Magen Dvorim Adom, it's NGO organization, the Israeli uh, Honeybee Care Association, that we have more than uh, 200 volunteers all around the country. They let volunteer to save, to care, to help bees, colonies that sit in place that uh, disturb, disturb people and when somebody called to the municipalities or to the other authorities that they have problem with the bees, we have all around the country the volunteers that are going to protect and save them. The second uh, uh, hat that I'm going to talk uh, in my little talk that I have, it's uh, the project that we have, it's educational prog uh, project, it's called Keys Kids and bees, it's a simple love story. And I'm going to show you a few films. And the third hat, it's the Urban Biodynamic Centers in Israel. That we have few centers around the countries, in Tel Aviv, in Jerusalem, in other places. And here I can uh, make you a little view about what we are here. 
Um, we have uh, one of the camera, I don't know if you see, the other Yossi Oud. Um, Michal, do you see the other Yossi Oud around, if you, in picture? I will take you for a little uh, show. View. Do you see where we are? On the rooftop of... Yes. I, I, I see it. Um, you see, you need to look at uh, the other, the, where it says Yossi Oud. The participant yeah. called Yossi Oud, everybody. So here we have the, our beehives on this rooftop. We have this oasis. As you see, the main road here of Jerusalem. And we have few centers like this in, uh, in Israel, in Jerusalem, in Tel Aviv. Um, sorry, we are uh, distributing, Yossi? yes. Yes, I'm sorry. What is it exactly that you just showed us? You showed... I am on the rooftop of a, the, one of the uh, shop centers in main Jerusalem. And we see the rooftops uh, around and now uh -huh. you're looking, you observe observation of our uh, beehive here. Okay, on the Ur rooftop. urban beekeeping. Urban biodynamic beekeeping. A biodynamic okay. approach. Urban biodynamic beekeeping, I see. Yes, the biodynamic approach as they are distributed here in Israel. It's a way to a new relationship with the bees. And if we are talking about a new relationship with the, in, with the bees, the, in our uh, thinking, it's the main problem of the disappearing of the bees. It's our will, the relationship with them. And I will share with you a little, a few little movies that can show you a new re relationship. Okay, I will stop share this and now I will share another screen with you. Just a minute, just a minute, I'm sorry. No, this is not this, I'm sorry. Okay, do you see the screen? Do you see the screen here? No, we don't see it yet. You have to do another no. sharing. You don't see it yet, so we will see it in a minute. I'm sorry. Now you will see it, okay? Yes, we see it.
Okay, so we see that uh, we can develop a new relationship with the bees. Uh, one sentence about biodynamic approach. Biodynamic approach, it's a, a way to keep bees without pesticides, without uh, chemicals, without those things. And all the bees we are uh, teaching, we are uh, training people to keep bees all around the country and in other uh, uh, places around the world uh, as uh, close as we can by the natural way that the bees use to live without uh, with minimum uh, um, involved in the life and the base uh, um, different between the biodynamic way of thinking and the conventional and also the organic way of beekeeping that all the swarm all the uh, all the beehive it's one organism it's not a 50,000 bees so it's 50,000 organism in the beehive all the beehive and the comb, vax comb, and the honey, and the uh, propolis, and the male, and the uh, workers, and the uh, queen, all of them are one animal, one organism. And when we are coming to them, to make a relationship with them, to take honey from them, for example, or to keep them, or to live with them, if we are uh, understand how it's happened and that all of them one organism and not 50,000 organisms, this is the base of the problem of the uh, uh, CCD, colony collapse disorder, of uh, uh, the varroa, the viruses that they have, and more and more uh, uh, illness and sickness that they have. People who keep bees by the biodynamic uh, way, the bees are not disappearing, less and less work, uh, people don't have to work so many around them, and they got from them uh, honey with the good qualities, and they live many years. Here's the beehive that we have here on the rooftop of Class Center in the center of Jerusalem, and all the other places around the country and the other countries are living many years, five, six, seven years, beehives, healthy, strong, without feeding sugar, without uh, uh, give them uh, uh, pesticides, without chemicals, and so on. And we see I'm in this uh, a project about 13 years, keeping this by the biodynamic way 13 years, and we see a good result in beekeeping in this way, and of course, uh, good honey. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yossi. Um, are there any questions? You can send them uh, through the chat. Uh, you see, I have a question. Uh, yes. You know, the, the Israeli uh, bee is a very uh, calm and friendly bee, but uh, the Africanized bee is uh, more defensive. Yeah, I know. And uh, the, the films that you showed uh, us are beautiful for Israel, but maybe they are not... Uh, um, so applicable uh, in in other countries, or maybe they are. What do you think? Of course. We have to check it, but you know the endemic bees that was here before the natural it was the Damascus bees that was here before the Italian bees came, came here. So all the time people told me that they are very aggressive. They will not. Uh, we can can't. Uh, work with them in the same way without uh, the protect uniform 
without uh, smoke and so on. And then I found a family, and a nice uh, Arab family that live uh, in the West Bank, in Judah and Shumraya, and they have uh, uh, Damascus bees. And uh, they use all the time to protect them. And I said, let's try to work with them in other way. And we work with them in other ways. I come without uniform. I open the beehive. I took the convex with the bees outside and have a look and found the queen and what we are going to do. And we made there a good, good uh, training from people from Jordan, from Kuwait, from the West Bank, from Israel, from Germany, many, many people. And also people told me that it will be very aggressive and I will not do it. We can, we can, uh, uh, we have to check it with the African also. Maybe they will behave like the Damascus bees that we found that it's really close to ours. And maybe we said, okay, there are two Africa, but we have to check it, I think, before we are decided if it's this way will work there or not. Okay, thank you. Uh, Michal, do you think that the uh, Be Hero sensors, do you think that they would uh, work with the in Africanized uh, hives, Africanized beehives? in the same way? So um, uh, it's a new problem and our sensors need to uh, collect data and then our algorithm needs to analyze the data we collect and then we'll be able to uh, understand. I'm sure that because there is a lot of activity happening inside the beehive when some kind of a threat enters the beehive and this is something we can understand if a beehive is not stable, I'm sure this is also something we can detect. But as we will learn this um, further, um, this detection will happen in a much early stage. Okay. Um, we have another question here uh, for both of our uh, guests. Um, what, what, do you, what do you think is the main reason for CCD? <laughs> yes, I will let you answer that. It's not a, it's not, okay. I don't think it's an answer. It's a question we can answer uh, because uh, the great minds of the world are trying to answer, but yeah. uh, it's not a specific problem. Uh, we think that we have, uh, we can suggest an answer for it. We think that the bees have cut off, cut off from the powers that gives them life in the environment, in the, in the area, in the land. Um, when we are taking the bees, we are feeding them sugar, we give them uh, uh, artificial combs, um, we cut them away from the healthy world, you know, animals on the world are uh, sick from time to time. Rabbits, gazelle, uh, birds, they are sick from time to time. From how they are uh, uh, health, how they are uh, uh, medicine themselves, they have their medicine and the healing product on the environment. Some of them had to die because, just a minute, this is a train uh, over here. <laughs> we are in the main street of uh, Jerusalem, um, so some of them had to die because they finished the way, but most of them heal themselves by the environment. They have growth and mineral that they take, but if they are feed them sugar, we are cut them away from all the healing product, eating uh, food that they have from around. If you give them medicine, antibiotics, and all those things, as I said, we cut them. The biodynamic way approach thinks that we have to give them back the power that they cut off from them from the environment. So, and as you see here, on the middle of Jerusalem and also in other places, we have beehive five, six, ten years without any chemicals, any sugar feeding, winters and summer in Jerusalem, it's very cold in the winter, and their life is living many years.
so they are not uh, disappearing, they are not get uh, the varroa, if, if they are get the varroa, uh, might, uh, they solve the problem by themselves, they heal themselves from them. Uh, the ants that come here around and eat it, and uh, so we give them a good environment to protect themselves and they don't need us. And so, if they need us, we have natural uh, a medicine from them. Yes. So, so Yossi, you are saying um, that like with human beings, uh, we are getting a lot of different uh, diseases because of uh, bad nutrition and chemicals. And you are saying that CCD is the same for the bees. The, biodynam the biodynamic approach believe Rudolf Steiner, the, the man who brought the biodynamic agriculture to the, to the world, he talked in 1929 in a, a conference that was in Dornach in Switzerland. And then he told to the people, it's almost 100 years ago, if the beekeepers will not, he said to the beekeepers, if you will not change the way that you will keep bees, in 100 years they will disappear from the world. So uh, Rudolf Steiner saw the CCD 100 years ago. Yes. So, uh, and, and, and we see it like here. You can come and research it and see it that we have, they don't have any problem most of them and yes. most of the time. Okay, um, uh, there's a question for you, Michal. Uh, the question is, uh, what is the bee population needed uh, per acre uh, for pollination purposes? What kind of a bee population do you need? Wait, you, we don't hear you. Sorry, you are, yeah. Okay, okay just to understand again, what is the population that is needed for, for pollination? Per acre, per acre, for pollination. So it depends. How many bees do you need or how many hives with what kind of a population is needed per so, acre? Yeah, okay, um, it depends on the crop. Okay, for different crops, you need different uh, amount of, of uh, bee, bees. Um, so, for example, in almonds, you need something like um, uh, two hives um, per acre, um, and, and, and it differs between different crops. So, there's not one question for that, but you can find the different recommendations. And this is also something that Be Hero is trying to uh, find the most precise answer for how many bee frames do you want to put in one acre in order to optimize. Um, we know that there is a recommendation in the United States for uh, two halves per acre when you when you grow almonds, uh, but sometimes it's better to use uh, one hive or a specific amount of frames that are strong enough and not just you know the rule of thumb of two of two beehives. But as as I said in the beginning, it depends on the crop. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, I see that there are many uh, French speakers among us. Um, I mean, there are people from all over the world, but unfortunately, Russian, I do not speak. But les Français, si vous avez des questions, je peux les traduire. Okay, I just told the French speakers if they have any questions, I can uh, translate your questions. Feel free to ask. Okay, so... Okay, so, so far there are no more questions. Uh, so I'd like to... Uh, to end this uh, event, um, I think it was uh, very interesting and uh, uh, we hope you have enjoyed it. Um, we'd like to thank our guests, uh, Ms. Michal Roizman uh, from Be Hero and Mr. Yossi Oud from Magen Dvorim Adom. Uh, and uh, uh, your, your presentations were very interesting and insightful and uh, we really appreciate the, the participation of all of um, the uh, spectators here. Uh, we're sorry that in such a large forum we do not have more time for interaction and discussion. Uh, but uh, again, I'd like to remind you that you can watch the video again um, on YouTube. It will be um, uploaded after the lecture, after the event is finished. Um, if you have any uh, um, uh, um, ideas for cooperation uh, between your organizations and MATC Mashab, Please do not hesitate to contact us. Uh, we would love to hear from you. 
And uh, you are also invited to visit all of our uh, future webinars. Uh, they are, all of the information is posted on Facebook and also on our website. So you are very welcome to do so. We would love to see you there with, with us. Um, I'd like to end with a note that I do see here among us. I don't recognize all of the faces, but I do recognize many of the names. I think many of you are uh, former are, are, are Shab graduates. Um, can you please uh, show a show of hands, um, uh, virtual hands, of course, or, or even uh, actual hands, um, if you are a Mashab graduate? Yeah, I know that there are many more. I see, we, I can see. Wait, don't, don't put your hands down because I need to go through screens to see everybody. Okay, uh, I don't see the... The videos. Okay, well, anyway, we are very happy to see you. We recognize so many of the names and we are so happy to see you with us. Um, I would like to end this event here and hope to see you on our future events. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.